The Green Bay Phoenix takes on the Wisconsin Badgers, and that's going to be a 5 p.m. Eastern start time at the Kohl Center. Wisconsin's the minus 23 and a half point favorite with the total at 147 and a hook. Now we're five and one in our last six daily best plays on patreon.com slash Brock page and access to today's daily best play is only going to cost you just $1 and 99 cents. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm going to explain a little bit more about it in just a few moments. We're also seven and two in our last nine underdog tier package picks on that site as well. And if you want to access today's underdog tier membership, uh, that's only going to cost you just $4.99. Now, if you want to go ahead and get in on the action, link for that website is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. Now, we're actually seeing steady movement toward Green Bay in the early wagering here. We're also seeing some slight movement downward on the total as well. Matter of fact, it was a uh, two-point move toward Green Bay and a a half-a-point move downward on that total. So once again, the Wisconsin Badgers open 25.5, down to 23.5, total open 148, down to 147 and a hook. And the Wisconsin Badgers are the $10 favorite on the money line, so look for them to be included in a bunch of money line parlays tonight. Now the Badgers are 2-0 straight up on this season, wins against Arkansas Pine Bluff and Eastern Illinois during that span. The Badgers actually put up 92 on Arkansas Pine Bluff in their most recent outing. Nate Roivers is averaging 16 points a game along with six boards and three blocks. The 6'11 senior is 8 of 11 from the stripe, and he has six total blocks on the season. Now, Micah Potter is also scoring 14 points a night along with seven boards and three assists. The 6'10 senior is averaging two steals a game and is shooting 80% from the stripe himself. Now, Demetric Trice is also scoring 13 points a night, along with three rebounds and four assists. Trice has three steals on the season and has made four of ten from downtown. Now, they're taking on a Green Bay squad who lost by 30 to Minnesota. They actually gave up 99 points to the Golden Gophers. They were catching 19.5 and and still ended up failing to cover the number by double digits. Now, total-wise, when it comes to the number in this one, Green Bay's contest with Minnesota did fly about 25 points above the posted number for that ball game. Meanwhile, the Wisconsin Badgers on the other side of things are 2-0 to the over on the season themselves. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the heavily favored uh, Wisconsin Badgers, minus 23 and a half, and the over, 147 and a hook in that game. And before we go ahead and move on, just want to take another quick time out and welcome you to the video. Got some lines and personal leans out for college basketball here for you today. But before, actually, we got about uh, seven games we're going uh, we're gonna to get through. We already got through one, so we got about six more games we're going to break down and take a look at here. Now, before we go ahead and dive into some more free content right here on YouTube, just want to quickly remind you once again that we are 5-1 and one in our last six daily best plays on Patreon.com slash Brock Page. And if you want access to our daily best play, it's only going to cost you just $1.99. We're also 7-2 and two in our last nine underdog tier package picks on that site as well. And if you want to access today's underdog tier membership, that's only going to cost you just $4.99. Now, you might be wondering, why would you sign up for picks and pay for them on Patreon, where you can get them right here for free on YouTube, and that's certainly a great thought a great consideration if if i was in your position right now watching me on youtube i'd probably be thinking the same exact thing but just hear me out real quick because if you were to go out there and bet every single game that's on the board side in total like i do here with my breakdowns on youtube it's certainly not a winning formula for success you do not have the edge when you take every single pick that I give out here on YouTube side in total. If you end up doing that, it's a recipe for disaster. The books are way too smart. They're way too sharp with the numbers. The odds become massively more against you. And to be honest with you, the bookies just have so much more money than you and I do combined to be able to absorb that type of action. So once again, I strongly discourage you from betting every single game that's on the board side in total that I give out here on YouTube. So what I do on Patreon is I make life a lot easier for you. 
I break it down and focus in on just three to four premium selections per day. They're my personal plays, games that I personally have action on. And I'll tell you this much, I'm having a lot more success betting on games that way versus wagering on every single game on the slate side in total. Uh, So just keep that uh, in mind. And the good news is today is the 1st of December. So uh, you are getting max value if you sign up here for a package today as you get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. Now, uh, if you want to join all those folks who are signed up right now, all you got to do is hit that link in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. And moving on, we're going to take a look at Omaha versus Creighton. That's going to be a 5 p.m. Eastern tip-off. Now, the Creighton Blue Jays are minus 20 with the total at 150 and a hook. We're seeing steady money on Creighton and the over in this one. No real surprise there. Pretty chalky uh, plays. The the Jays open 19 up to 20. Total open 146 and a half up to 150 and a hook. That was actually a uh, a four-point move on this total here. Now, uh, Creighton failed to cover a similar number in their last outing, and that was against North Dakota State. They were laying 23 and a half. And beat him by just 11. Now, six foot seven junior Christian Bishop has zero assists, uh, had zero assists in the opener and zero blocks. Meanwhile, standout guard Marcus Zagorowski shot just five of 15 from the field and just two for 11 from downtown. Now, senior guard Mitch Ballack also struggled from beyond the arc against North Dakota State. Mitch shot just two of nine from downtown himself and just 33% from the field. Now, Creighton is taking on an Omaha program who covered the number in two out of their last three themselves. Junior guard Marlon Ruffin is scoring over 16 points a night, along with four rebounds and a couple of steals. The junior from Madison, Wisconsin, has hit 18 of 19 from the foul line, good for 95% from the strike. Meanwhile, senior forward uh, Matt Pyle is also averaging double-digit points a night, along with 10 boards and a block. Powell's got 29 total rebounds through uh, three games. Now, total-wise, when it comes to the number in this one, the Mavericks of Nebraska-Omaha are 3-0 to the under thus far for the season. Meanwhile, Creighton's lone matchup of the season stayed under the line themselves. So we're going to go ahead and lean toward an underdog in this one. Uh, I'm going to lean toward the Omaha Mavs plus 20, keeping this one close, and the under 150.5 in that contest. All right, next matchup, it is going to be Navy versus Georgetown, and that's going to be a 6 p.m. Eastern start time at the Capital One Arena. The Georgetown Hoyas are the 10-point favorite with a total at 139.5. Now, we're seeing pretty good two-way action with regard to the sides. Not a whole lot of movement uh, with regard to the spread right now. We've seen a half a point move either way, uh, but we're still right at that opening number. Uh, On the other hand, we did see a two-point move downward on this total. So once again, Georgetown open and remains minus 10, but the total open 150, I'm sorry, the total open 141 and a hook down to 139 and a half. The Hoyas are the $6.50 favorite to win this one outright. Now the Hoyas did fail to cover the number in their season opener against UMBC. Uh, You guys probably remember the uh, Retrievers uh, from a uh, historic uh, playoff run uh, a few years back. But anyway, uh, that was a 13-point lay in that ball game against UMBC, and they won by only a dozen. Now, their leading scorer, Javon Blair, went just 2 of 8 from beyond the arc and failed to record any steals defensively. Meanwhile, senior guard Donald Carey failed to get to uh, the stripe once in that ball game against UMBC. Now, they are taking on a Navy program who's 2 and one straight up on the season, 2 and one against a number in those ball games. The midshipmen are led by senior guard Cam Davis, who's scoring 17 points a night along with a couple of rebounds and three assists. Davis is currently shooting over 51% from the field and 91% at the line. Junior guard John Carter Jr. is also scoring nearly a dozen a night along with four boards and a steal. Navy covered against the likes of Mount St. Mary's and George Washington. Now, total-wise, Navy's second contest of the season against Maryland did stay under the posted number. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, the Hoyas saw their season opener stay under the line themselves. So with all that said and done, we're going to lean toward yet another underdog in this matchup here. 
Georgetown should end up winning it, but I think Navy should keep it close. So give me the underdog Navy midshipman plus 10 and the under 139 and a half. Next matchup, Davidson versus Providence, 7 p.m. Eastern start time. The Providence Friars are the one and a half point favorite with the total at 142, juice to the under. And if you like Davidson to win this one outright, they're plus a dollar five for some money line cash. Now, Davidson nearly beat the uh, Texas Longhorns in their last outing yesterday. That was only a two point loss to Texas in a very strong effort. Now, uh, Davidson also won their season opener against High Point. No real surprise there, but they did put up 82 points in that contest. Very effective offensively. Kellen Grady scoring 17 points a night along with five boards and three assists. Grady's also got three steals on the season, and he's four for four from the foul line. Sophomore Hun Jun Lee is scoring 15 points a game along with three rebounds and six assists. The six foot seven forward from South Korea has hit five of 12 from downtown while also going a perfect six for six from the line. Meanwhile, freshman forward Sam Menenga is also scoring 15 a game along with seven boards. Now, uh, Davidson certainly scours the edges of uh, earth to recruit their players. Uh, they do a great job recruiting, a uh, great job internationally as uh, Menenga is from Auckland, New Zealand. Now, uh, Davidson is taking on a Providence team who just got shellacked last night by Indiana by 21 points. The Friars were held to just 58 total points in that contest. Uh, really not a whole lot doing on the offensive side of things. Their second leading scorer this season, David Duke, is shooting just 30% from the field. And when it comes to the number in this one, both of Providence's opening two ball games of the 2020 season stayed under the total of 142 points. So uh, yet again, we're going to lean toward yet another underdog. I'm going to lean toward the underdog Davidson Wildcats plus one and a half in the under 142. Next matchup. This should actually be a good one. I know that it's uh, overshadowed by some bigger games later, uh, later tonight, but Oklahoma State is taking on Marquette, and that's going to be a 7 p.m. Eastern tip-off at the Pfizer Forum. Now, Marquette's the three-point favorite. Total's 147 flat. We are seeing early money coming in on the Oklahoma State Cowboys as well as the over. It was actually a one-and-a-half-point move toward Oklahoma State and a one-point move upward on the total. So once again, Marquette open four and a half, down to minus three. Total open 146, up to 147. Marquette is 2-0 straight up on the season. Blowout victories over the likes of Eastern Illinois and Arkansas Pine Bluff. They were laying 15 against Eastern Illinois, and they were laying 30 against Arkansas Pine Bluff, and they covered both of those numbers with ease. The Golden Eagles are led by freshman forward Dawson Garcia, who's scoring 18 a game along with six rebounds and two assists. Garcia's gone four of six from beyond the arc and 11 of 13 from the foul line. Senior guard Kobe McEwen is also scoring 13 a night along with four rebounds and three assists. McEwen has hit four of nine from downtown himself. And big six foot nine senior Theo John is bringing down 11 rebounds a game and shooting 85% from the line. The forward from Minneapolis has seven blocks already and is scoring 11 points a night. Now, the Golden Eagles are taking on an Oklahoma State squad who's 2-0 straight up themselves. But they did fail to cover a 9.5 point spread against Texas Arlington. That's UT Arlington in their season opener. They were favored by 9.5 and, and only won by 7. Now, the, Co uh, the Cowboys' second leading scorer on the team is averaging just 9 points a night and has yet to record a rebound or an assist. Now, total-wise, Oklahoma State is 2-0 to the under thus far in the season. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Marquette's most recent outing with Eastern Illinois stayed 26 points below the posted number for that ball game as well. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lean toward the Marquette Golden Eagles minus 3 and the under 147 in that contest. And with that, we're going to dive into... Uh, you know, one of these games we always look forward to. This is going to be a great matchup here. I'm talking about Michigan State versus Duke, 7.30 p.m. Eastern tip-off at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Duke Blue Devils are minus three with a total at 149.5. Now, we are seeing slight movement toward Michigan State, and we're also seeing heavy movement toward the under in this one. Half a point move toward the Spartans, along with a two-and-a-half point move downward on this total here. So once again... The Blue Devils open three and a half down to minus three. 
Total open 152 down to 149 and a hook. Duke is minus $1.60 on the money line. Now, Duke took care of Coppin State in their season over, uh, opener a few days ago. No real surprise there. DJ Stewart, uh, he scored 24 points in that ball game. He also had nine rebounds and a couple assists uh, for the freshman there. DJ shot 10 of 18 from the field and four of nine from downtown. Stewart also recorded uh, a steal and a block in that ball game as well. Now, forward Jalen Johnson also scored 19 against Coppin State. But the real eye-opener was how many rebounds this guy got. 19 of them. Johnson had 19 rebounds. He went 19, 19, and 5 with four blocks. And as a matter of fact, Jalen Johnson didn't miss a, a, a shot all game. as He, he went 8 for 8 from the field, 2 for 2 from the stripe. And uh, he did make his only three-point attempt on the evening. And oh, yeah, can't forget about Wendell Moore Jr., he also dropped 13 points along with four rebounds and a couple assists for the Blue Devils. So uh, certainly uh, some impressive statistics there for a, a Duke team who kind of started off a little bit sleepy against Coppin State. But anyway, Duke is taking on a Michigan State team who failed to cover the number in their season opener against Eastern Michigan. They also gave up 70 points to Notre Dame in their most recent outing a couple of days ago. Sparty's leading scorer, Joey Hauser, is 0 for 6 on the season from three-point land. He has yet to make a three-pointer, and he's shooting just 62% from the line. Hauser's also failed to record a defensive steal or block as well. Now, total-wise, when it comes to the number in this one, the Spartans have gone 2-0 to the over thus far in the season. Duke saw their season opener against Coppin State get over the line themselves. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward the Duke Blue Devils, minus 3, in the over 149 and a half in that game. And with that, we're going to dive into our next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be Kentucky versus Kansas. 9.30 p.m. Eastern start time at the Bankers Life Fieldhouse. The Kansas Jayhawks are minus four with the total at 143 and a half. We're seeing steady two-way action on the spread in this one. Not a whole lot of movement there. Uh, but we are also seeing steady action on on the under in this one, that was a one and a half point move downward on the total. So once again, the Kansas Jayhawks open and remains minus four. Total open 145 down to 143 and a half. The Kansas Jayhawks are the $2 favorite to win this one outright. Now when it comes to uh, this ball game here, uh, the Jayhawks uh, successfully covered a 21 point spread against St. Joe's in their last outing. They racked up 94 total points on the Hawks in that outing. And despite losing their season opener to Gonzaga, the, the Jayhawks managed to put up 90 points in that ball game against the Bulldogs as well. Now Christian Braun is scoring 19 points a night along with six rebounds and a couple of steals. Braun is also shooting 13 of 19 from the field and 7 for 11 from downtown. Junior guard O'Shea Ogbaji is also scoring 18 points a game along with three assists and a couple of steals. Obaji has gone seven of eight on free throws and four of nine from beyond the arc. And of course, senior guard Marcus Garrett is also averaging 14 points a game as well as five boards and a pair of steals himself. Uh, Garrett is shooting over 57% from the field, and he's also gone 9 for 11 shooting free throws. Now, they are taking on a Kentucky squad who, believe it or not, they lost to the Richmond Spiders in their last outing the other day. The Wildcats were laying 7 points, and they ended up losing convincingly uh, by a dozen. And as a matter of fact, the Richmond Spiders held Kentucky to just 64 total points in that contest. Kentucky's leading scorer, Brandon Boston, has yet to make a three-pointer on the season. Uh, more specifically, Boston is 0 for 7 shooting the long ball. Meanwhile, their second leading scorer, Terrence Clark, he's gone 0 for 4 from beyond the arc himself. So that's 0 for 11 between their two leading scorers. Uh, certainly no threat from downtown right now. When I, uh, now, when it comes to the total on this one, the Kansas Jayhawks did see their opening two contests of the season get over the posted number. They're scoring 92 points a game on average in those two contests. So with all that said and done, I'm going to lean toward the Kansas Jayhawks minus four 
and the over 143 and a half in that ball game. And with that, guys, we're going to dive into our quick pick recap. Once again, brought to you by Patreon dot com slash Brock page I like Wisconsin minus 23 and a half over 147 and a hook I also like Omaha Nebraska plus 20 and the under 150 and a half I'm leaning toward Navy plus 10 under 139 and a half I'm also leaning toward Davidson plus one and a half under 142 I like Marquette minus three under 147 I also like Duke minus three over 149 and a half and last but certainly not least I'm leaning toward the Kansas Jayhawks minus four and the over 143 and a half in that game. And with that, guys, we're going to dive into some shout outs. Once again, brought to you by Patreon.com slash Brock Page. And from our Instagram platform, shout out to print name here, Prono Sports Bet, Texas Omen R3, John Anderson, Bubba Jonesy, James Bruce, J Mobile, Cool Sorry. Xylo Plastic, Nurse Iscali, and Sports Lover 2K. And then finally, from our YouTube platform, got to give a shout out to Bertrand Tech Montreal, Darius, <coughs> excuse me, Darius McNeil, Gino Hernandez, Elliot V, Nathan Williams, Sean Mejias, Jeffrey Sung, Oliver Bryant, CQP Underboss, and last but certainly not least, got to give a shout out to my good friend, Kevin Taylor. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you guys decide to get a package here today, just keep in mind, we'll bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. Today is December 1st, so you are getting your absolute max value by signing up today here on the 1st. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy Tuesday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash Brock Page.